Hey, everybody. Welcome to the Freakin' Epic Podcast. This is Zach. This is John. And this is also Zach. Uh, I just wanted to get my name in there twice, you know, brand recognition. If I say my name a third time, Zach, then according to pretty much all advertising stuff, uh, you'll remember me. So that's the dream, that you'll remember me mm-hmm. one day when I'm dead. That's why I'm making this podcast. <laughs> John, one day when I'm dead, you'll remember me, but only because uh, of this podcast. Only because of this podcast. Bro- bro- Oh, man, I can't speak today right now, apparently. <laughs> Only because of this podcast and, you know, nothing else at all. Nothing else. Nothing else in life. Never, never, never anything else. Mm-hmm. Because what's important is this podcast. And today on the podcast, we are going to talk about the top five game shows that we would pitch if we could pitch game shows, which you probably can't, actually. Netflix mm-hmm. is doing a bunch of stuff. We should talk to them. Uh, so I'm going to go with my number five. Are you you ready for this? Let's hear it. My number five uh, game show is called The House Challenge. The House Challenge. It is starring, like, the host of the show is uh, Dr. House from television. Right. And the entire thing is every week different doctors uh, have patient, like, they basically get different doctors, and they bring patients in, and the patients are kind of like the interns on the show House, and mm-hmm. Dr. House just gruffly asks them, like, all right, well, what do you think it is? And every end, it's basically, who can who can pre- correctly predict what the heck is going on with this patient? And it's always, like, weird diseases no one's ever heard of. Okay. <laughs> Things that, like, they're naming the diseases on the show kind of they're, thing. Well, but they're they're mo- they're re- all real diseases that exist before. Because at the end of every show, Doctor House, if they get it right, Doctor House has to be able to go. Yeah, I t- see here it is written down in my pocket. That's exactly what it, what the diagnosis was going to be. Mm-hmm. And if they're wrong, he just has to berate them as you know, stupid intern. You know, all in the house way, just basically berate them about the fact that they don't know anything about medicine and they don't look outside the box. And then he takes a Vicodin and hobbles away. Right. Okay. And and so also every um every time every doctor gets um mm-hmm. a specific portion of the winning of the winnings uh donated to their hospital and the rest goes to paying off their student loans. <laughs> <laughs> okay, man. <laughs> that Okay. <laughs> uh, it's going to be a very gross reality show. Cause yeah, like just be... super weird, like <laughs> discussing mega rabies. Yeah, discuss, uh, bees in the butt, you know, whatever. Right. I barely watched House ever. I've watched like bits and pieces of episodes. But every time it was some insane, wild nonsense of a of a diagnosis. Okay. Okay. Well, my number five is actually somewhat similar similar oh, to that, I would say. Uh, but not in the sense of, uh, like, it's fresh doctors and whatever. But the idea is a uh, job swap. So oh, okay. you get, like, a carpenter and a doctor to swap jobs. <laughs> and a doctor, and, of course. Safest right. Way. And whoever does something, like, performs a surgery f- uh, faster or versus building a house faster, like... Well, and wait. better. Actually, and that's... Better. That's a really good idea, actually, because you could do that with tons of different jobs. You could basically just um, have different people. I mean, you wouldn't do, you know, the actual build a house, but you do kind of like challenges that um, that maybe a med student do or or like like you just kind of create uh, challenges for each job. That's actually right. That's actually really cool. It's uh, like maybe instead of uh, performing open heart surgery, it's how fast can uh, you suture a wound versus you, uh, the doctor, um, like do the footer for a house. Yeah. Well, and so I I like the idea of having three contestants every week and they kind of so that way each person has to do two different jobs. Right. Um, and then whoever wins each week stays on and gets to try because then oh, there's like newer, oh, man, newer this job. person is the ultimate the ultimate all rounder. He's good at everything. And he's and then you know, like someone's on their second week and they're like, Oh my goodness, he might win again, but he can't possibly be an auto mechanic and is like, Ha, I was an auto mechanic in college, bam. <laughs> okay, yeah. Exactly. I would I would, really I would definitely watch that. watch that show. Yeah. <laughs> All right, Netflix, here's out. Sponsor us. 
Fire Sponsor show. Sponsor us by our show. All right, would you <laughs> don't, here, here's how. Um, uh, let me go with number four here. Um, so I would go with Politics the Show. Politics and the Show. So basically, it's like a small town. And, you know, if there's 20 people running for mayor or something. So everyone running for mayor has to do challenges each week, like convince a business to to come to the town or right. like, you know, reopen a park or figure out a budgetary thing. Like every single week uh, there's different different challenges. So, you know, negotiations and then okay. every week, one of the uh, every week, one of the mayors, one of the mayor candidates gets voted off of voted uh, off of the uh Island voted off of the well, yeah voted off the island but kind of like voted off of the city council because you you'd call it the city council like all the mm-hmm. people were all the people who are uh, running for mayor and yeah and then whoever wins gets to be the actual mayor of the town man I feel like that would be a much better way than our current political system <laughs> but not to get political whatsoever yeah that's so I, I, okay. So, so it was my number four my number four is along the lines of like something that i feel like might actually be a japanese game show it it certainly is now the moment you say that it is everything is a japanese game show see my thought is it's a race to answer the phone (laughs) okay so what you do is you get like a thousand cell phones or something stupid like that put them in a gymnasium and have it to where only one of them is calling oh. and you have to find the cell phone and then you can put them on like conveyor belts or uh you know other things like that so the phones are moving around so it's harder to like track down exactly where it's coming from but the first person to answer the phone wins and of course you could do other things like you know well, actually move here, up the you floor can... you could like so they're slipping around uh, you could have uh, the phone stop ringing um, once people get close, and then another phone starts uh, ringing. Yeah, stuff like that. And you could do you could do it kind of similar to like um, what's that show? Uh, who wants uh, um, the show that Howie Mandel does, where like the banker calls or whatever, the one with all the cases. Oh, uh, uh, I know which yeah. one you're talking about, but but you could do basically every time you answer a phone. Oh, you on the phone giving you like a hundred dollars or ten dollars or a thousand dollars, and so right. you're trying to, if you're just trying to like f- get to the fo- get to a lot of phones, but also get to like which ones you think are the rich phones. Right, right. Yeah, yeah, I'd be okay with that. That would be actually really fun to watch. Like, just to, that that is one hundred percent a Japanese game show, though. Like, yeah, I mean, I, I figured it would be like because it's too s- brilliant of an idea not to be like not to yeah. toot my own horn but it, it's too <laughs> like too just the right amount of dumb you know <laughs> game shows have to be make you feel smart but also not require you to think too much right like, it's just like a, like the wheel of fortune thing like jeopardy's an outlier because you actually have to really think but like i feel like most most of them price is right you have to think but also you kind of can shut your brain off at the same, while watching it at the same time. Uh-huh. There's that's the sweet spot. Okay. So my number 3 is uh where we get our deal taken away by Netflix. It's called Disability Island. Disability and, Island. Yeah. And so every every week like the or, or every every um game is different people get different abilities taken away. So it's like, you know, you might um you might uh, have your have blinders put on so you can't see, or have earmuffs p- uh, put on, and so you have to complete challenges against um, against uh, handicapped people, and you have basically, but you have okay. to live. You have to like learn to live like them a little bit because you are you are blinded or or deaf or you can't talk or or you know whatever dis- different disability you could be uh like they just strap you down to a wheelchair or like mm-hmm. tie your legs together so basically everyone's trying to um to learn what it's like to live disabled and kind of figure out way ways to make the make it work mm-hmm. 
And so the way, uh, the way it would work is they, every single, um, time you win, if, if the, if the, um, if either person wins, money goes to the uh, to a, a charity helping with that specific disability, like you mm-hmm. know, can't, like uh, hearing research or whatever. And then, um, but then each person, if you actually win, you get money as well for yourself. Right, right. No, that's a kind of cool way to wear, uh, raise awareness and whatnot. Yeah, it raises awareness, and you kind of like you get to see people do funny challenges, like. Right that uh they shouldn't be doing without eyes or whatever mm-hmm. i kind gotcha a slight mix of like ellen you know where she does all yeah that does her like game. crazy weird things like that yeah but it's also so it's like that but also serious and the nice thing about about these these different shows is kind of if you watch modern game shows like a lot of the a lot of the big ones now there's like the entire episode is like the game show, but like probably 60% like telling the story of this person's life. They find some interesting good person and they're like, well, here's about, here's, you know, I'm choosing this number because this was the number that my dad picked when he um, airlifted a bunch of seniors out of fires in, in New Zealand or something. <laughs> okay. No, uh, that's good. That's good. All right. Uh, my number three is way less serious. <laughs> okay, okay. My uh, my number three is a race of teaching old people, like really old people, how to use Skype to call the host. <laughs> <laughs> how to use Skype to do what? To call the host. Whoever calls the host <laughs> first wins. But. And, and- not just Skype. It's like they might have to Facebook message as well. No, or yeah, they... yeah. The idea is they are given a laptop fresh out of the box. Oh, man. So they have to figure out how to install Skype, how to uh, <laughs> like how to install Skype, how to get up and running, how to get the host phone number, um, and so on and so forth. That is... That is hilarious. That might be too long. It might there might be people who never get it. You know, well, it, it's it'd be like a a two week event. <laughs> two weeks to figure it out. Old pe- um, oh man, what old people trying to learn technology would be an amazing, an amazing game show. I would watch the heck right? out of that. Right. Um, and they they would understand that they're trying to do something, but they just they. Th- they can't comprehend it. <laughs> oh man! And you could have it. You could have it sponsored by a different company each week. So one yeah. of them, you know, HP well, laptops, and you have to figure out something about HP laptop, or or it's sponsored or like, by Skype, and it's or a MacBook, and you have to, instead of uh, Skype, it's a uh, FaceTime, or how to yeah. download an app or something, or how to use Photoshop. Yeah, that would be that would be amazing. I would watch every day. I would watch old people who don't know how to I would watch my dad have to use technology all day <laughs> and you could also have like MXZ style announcers just right. like have running a comedic commentary on it I think the season finale is <laughs> teaching them how to play like a video game yes yes and just them like spinning around in the air and whoever gets one whoever gets like one kill wins exactly it takes an hour <laughs> like little time-lapse montages of people trying stuff right okay okay Okay, uh so my my number my number two is called burglary burglary so it's kind of like a like so that you take a big mansion and you get these kind of oversized like nickelodeon style um uh things like uh, security cameras and laser wires and just all these different security measures. And you have a, basically every week a team of contestants has to try to burglarize the house. And mm-hmm. so they try to steal – they're basically trying to get in and out without getting caught, trying to steal as many items as possible. Each item is worth a different amount of real money. Uh-huh. And and there's like little different safe zones that you can find. And when you're trying in the safe zones, you can make all sorts of negotiations with your fellow contestants. Like, oh, okay. Okay, there's no way we can get past this next guard without one of us being a distraction. The distraction's probably going to get caught. And like people trying to negotiate with each other over who like who gets caught. Um, who gets and- caught. 
because there's there's certain certain things that everyone gets the money and but like probably two thirds of them are only like whoever's left standing at the end gets the money. So mm-hmm. you're trying to like you're also kind of trying to fight against your fellow burglars and get them caught, but you want to get them caught in such a way that you can still get to the end of the sh- make it to the end of the show because you want all the money possible. So there's like a lot of a lot of um, kind of human uh, human like psychology, human backstabbing humans. Yeah, and um, every week the every week it's a different it's a different um, setup for the for the house. So there's different challenges, different types of things. Like one week there'll be secure guard dogs, or you know, mm-hmm. like different ways. You know, and there'll be like physical challenges. So one week you'd have to like rappel down some fake chimney or something. You know. Okay. So you're basically just trying to to plan a heist so you like you have a planning you have like a a one hour planning phase every time you get like you know okay the inside man has got the plans to the house so they get kind of the plans to the house but they're always you know there's always little surprises hidden that aren't on the plans and right so they have they have to plan and they're but they're and they're working together but also they don't want to work together and some guys like i know how to do this and everyone else like no not listening to him and maybe he goes off on his own and Right. I, I would watch that show. All right. Well, that, again, is kind of similar to something that <laughs> I had planned out um, or had thought about. Uh, my number two would be um, Extreme Hide and Go Seek. Oh, uh, okay. Which is something that I would watch, um, but instead of it being like Hide and Go Seek, but more along the lines of... Uh, like, you take a small town, so definitely not something like New York City, because it'd be impossible to do. Yeah. Um, but you take, like, a small town, like, North Platte, Nebraska. Uh, um, well, North uh, North Platte's, I guess, well, I guess that's small. Yeah. But um, the point is to get from, like, the west side to the east side of the city without being caught. Oh, that's really cool. They, you could call it manhunt. Yeah, yeah, exactly like that. Yeah. Um, and so you have to plan around, like, the cops uh, going through, like, rotations of the city, you know, different patrols. Uh, cops are looking around with, like, guard dogs and things like that. Like, they've got your scent. Um, there are, like, plants uh, in the city who, like, will see you. If they see you, they, um, like, can try to stop you and uh, hold you till the cops come. So you have to try to evade them, too. But also, like, people who will help you. Is there, you know, of, along the lines of, you know, the police kind of thing? <laughs> you, the only did the only thing about this is I guarantee someone's going to get shot. Like someone's going to be running for the police and someone's going to see this and they're going to be like ram their vehicle in and then shoot them. Oh, no, no, like, no, no. This was a TV show. Why? You tell like you explain to the town beforehand. And that's why you have to do it to a really small town. OK, OK. But what if someone's on vacation? They come back and bam. Like it's I don't know. <laughs> Producers could figure that out. <laughs> that would be super fun though. Like yeah. I would I would watch a movie based on that show. Actually there was a movie I mean there was a movie called Tag, which was vaguely similar to that actually. Like it was just it's based on a real life story of friends who have played the same game of tag for like I don't know. Yeah, like, yeah. I, I saw that movie. It's got um uh Jeremy Renner. Yeah. And other funny people who I can't remember. Other funny people, yes. Um, no, no, no. That, so that's what I got so far. All right. So here, are right, you ready? Your for number my, one. My number one, my number one game show I'm pitching is called The Real Florida Man. The Real Florida Man. The Real Florida Man. So you have trivia about um, which things are actually done by Florida people. And uh, my favorite part is that you have to reenact. Basically, people have to figure out how to reenact Florida man things. So you have to figure out how to, like, get a shark onto a bus. And, oh, okay. Or basically any anything. It's just all Florida. It's all Florida man themed. And it's all just trying to figure out which wild nonsense was actually done by a Florida person and how to recreate said wild nonsense. <laughs> okay. And every uh, week there's, yeah, no, new, that, that, there's and, new ammo, ammunition, because every week a new Florida man thing is done. 
Oh man, good old Florida man. I, I mean, and it's about time that someone monopolized on that or capitalized on that. Excuse me. Yeah. Someone, of just someone, yeah. We definitely need to, to bring out the reality of, of of Florida man. Right. Okay. Well, that is infinitely better than my number one. <laughs> okay. What's your number one? My number one is the Forrest Gump challenge. The f- so you have to run across the entire country? Multiple times. <laughs> that's, not, that's not a game show. That's an ultra marathon. Yeah. I, 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 I just want to watch a documentary on ultra marathons. And, but it gets even better. Uh, okay, okay. Of, on top of, you know, because in like ultra marathons, you have to do kayaking, like bike riding, things like that. Yeah. No, no, no. It's you gotta do things like parkouring, like skydiving. Um, How was that the like, Forrest Gump challenge? You, if, if if it's Forrest Gump, you have to you have to convince a um, yeah. You have to start a cult following woman to abusive and abused woman to fall in love with you briefly. No, no, no. You, you just gotta do every part of, of Forrest Gump. So you gotta start a. Uh, you yes, have to start run, a cult to, who is following you, like throughout the entirety of this uh, race, and you, you have get to more money a, based you have off to of carry bleeding soldiers uh, away from war. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> and, uh, um, but yeah, yeah. every kind of shrimp, every kind of shrimp preparation possible. Right. You have to put so much money into Apple. <laughs> You have to invest in okay, which which of these companies is going to be the next Apple? Right. Just, segment is on a different channel, so the uh, investing segment is on uh, CNBC, and the running one is on ESPN five, and <laughs> then the um, uh, the Ginny part is on Cinemax. <laughs> <laughs> um, yeah, and you just uh, I don't know, like. This was definitely better than what I was initially thinking, but I'm into it. I'm into it. All right. So we th- there you go, Netflix. If you need any game shows, we have just given you five glorious game shows apiece, and at least one of those could probably be a real thing. At least one. At least one, at the very least. All right, guys. So thank you for listening. This is the Freakin' Epic Podcast. We'll be back at some point i shouldn't say that we'll we'll be back next week most likely if we do it if we, we do very, it if we feel like it we, and are we apologize so prepared <laughs> all we, right guys you definitely did not text me about half an hour ago saying hey do you want to do a podcast today <laughs> <laughs> it never happened i, I nope, don't even know nope, what you're talking about. yeah was, we have been planning this for weeks and now i have to go bleep out your f word what, 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 what did i swear <laughs> The F the police. Oh, huh. Uh, now, uh, it's so much more work. If I have to do that every week, that's like an extra minute every week. Oh, I man. How um, to actually bleep a whole up. extra minute of yeah. your time. Oh, God. My time could be used for so many better things like watching nothing on television. <laughs> watching any of our shows on television. Uh, watching uh, Baby Yoda. I still haven't seen that. I won't say anything more then. Okay. Well, on uh, this spoiler-free ending, we thank you for listening to the Freaking Epic Podcast. Have a great day, guys. Have a good one.